dog. I have a whole bunch of stuff here in front of me. I don't know if you can see it. There. Let me see if I can show you. I have a whole bunch of stuff here, and I'm going to go through them all, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to have as a dog owner. And if you have any questions, leave those questions in the chat area, and I'll answer them right away. Uh, I have also um, some stuff that I'm going to share with you, which is basically understanding why you're using this stuff, uh, like brushes and things like that. I'm not going to go in detail like how to use them, but just the basic things that you need to have as a dog owner. I'm going to share it with you. If you are new here and uh, your first time you're visiting this page, this community and this channel, Welcome, my name is Soro, I'm a dog trainer, I also coach dog owners. And if you want to become an educated dog lover and have a well-behaved, healthy and happy dog, consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the bell icon as well. So it, YouTube is going to send you notifications as soon as I post any video or even if I go live just like this. Uh, so today, um, if you're watching this on a rerun and, uh, and you have questions, leave those questions in the comments area. But if you're live with me now, uh, if you have any questions again, let me know and I'll answer them right away. So let's start first. What are the basic things that you need to have as a dog owner? So one of the first things that I suggest a dog owner to have is a collar. Just a simple collar, snap-on doesn't have to be fancy mancy just ha could be just a simple snap-on collar and I prefer to have your dog's name embroidered on it your dog's name and the phone number that people can reach you right away on the collar itself embroidered is better than the tags because tags tend to uh, fade off after a few months, it's not clear enough for people to look at it and uh, if your dog is uh, lost or something has happened to your dog, people can't contact you right away. But uh, uh, a collar like this, if it's on the dog, you know, that's all people need to see, the phone number, and they will call you. So you can order these collars online nowadays. Uh, this one was made for Jonah, my, pre my be beagle who passed away last year. So I made this for him. Actually, my wife made this for us, for uh, our beagle. But you can order these online. So a simple collar is very basic to have. I suggest to have a four foot, four foot a six foot, and a long leash as well. So. Why do you want to have all kinds of leashes? Why four foot, six foot, and a long leash? You know, 15 foot, feet, uh, 20, 25 feet, as long as you can go. Because you want to start training your dog on a short leash, and then move on to longer leash, and then longer and longer. Leash is the best tool that you can use to start training your dog. Uh, and the leash can be matched with your uh, dog's collar, collar, uh, and then um, you start training your dog on a short leash, and then go to uh, a 10 foot leash, like this. So again, uh, uh, we made, we customized this, so this is for our daycare. So I customized this and an embroidered on the leash, for example. So this is a six foot leash. The six foot leash comes after you have used the four foot leash, then you go on to six foot leash. The longer leash, the you know, this one I think is 15 feet. I have a few of these, so if I need to make it 30 feet and longer, I just, uh, just connect them to each other and make it longer. So it's something like this. Just connect them like this or vice versa, you just connect them like that. Like that. 
now this becomes a longer leash. So now you have a longer leash. So the long leash is good to use when you are especially training your dog to go, let's say, off leash eventually. If you eventually want to get to off leash uh, training, you can use a long leash and just let it drag on the ground as you're walking your dog and you have, you know, one side is attached to your dog and the other side you can hold on to it or you can just let it go and just step on the long leash. So this is another tool that it's necessary to have and it's a good idea to have. Now there are other kinds of leashes. Uh, the other kind that I like to use, uh, they are called uh, multifunction by the way, I'm not associated with any of these products. I'm not, uh, I'm not promoting any of these products. I'm just promoting, not promoting, I'm just suggesting you to use these tools. Uh, so I like these leashes because you can uh, attach these to your waist and um, one side gets on, attached to your dog's collar and the other side you can just lock it here and now you have it on your waist and you can use it to you know do your training during the day you can do <clears throat> if you're sitting in the office your dog can be attached to it and, and you can use these leashes so they're just called multi-function leashes so leash and collars are the basic things that you need to have as a dog owner uh, now you can go fancy mancy and you can make it fancier and make it in a way um, any kind of color that you want to use, but I like the, the simple version that I can embroider my dog's name and the phone number for safety. That becomes two birds in one. The other thing that I suggest you to have, it's a harness. This is a harness that you can use it as just like a harness that you can put on your dog. Uh, and also it becomes a harness that you can use in the car. So it has that chest protection like that. So you can attach this to your uh, car's harness. So it becomes also another safety tool for you to use uh, when your dog is in the car. So harness, collar, leash, so far you've gone. Now, the other thing that I would suggest you to have is a jacket or a raincoat. Uh, I have this for my own dog, the army style. Uh, it's just a raincoat to keep uh, my dog Harvey uh, dry. And it's just that you, you just put this on your dog and it kept, keeps everywhere but the head and the bum area uh, dry. So it's, it's not covering the whole body, but it's better than nothing. So also it's, it keeps your dog warm. So uh, a raincoat or a jacket also it's a good idea to have. The other thing is you need food balls. Food balls, you know, food and water. You, you can have two different sizes of balls or two same size or two different colors. Um, one for food, one for water. Um, Again, footballs, I suggest to go with um, uh, aluminum and uh, these are much more safer to, and easier to clean as well. Uh, so footballs are a good idea. Uh, the other thing that I suggest you to get, if you, if you could, is a seat cover. This, uh, this company that I use myself is called Soggy Dog, they're a local company. Uh, they, manufactured locally so and also they have it online again if you want I'm not associated with any of these companies again I just use them I like to use them and I'm suggesting you to also use them so this is a seat cover just gonna bring it forward so it's a back seat cover so you just cover the back seat of your car so it doesn't get your back seat dirty uh, when your dog goes in and out after the hikes and gets wet and all that, just protects your seat cover. So that's another thing that it's a good idea to have. Uh, the other things that I would start suggesting now, and let's get into grooming part of your dog, is uh, you can use any brush that 
you find easy for your dog's hair and fur, and length and size and design that it is. You can find any kind of brush that you feel comfortable using them, but it's good to brush your dog every day. So find a brush that it's, you like to use and your dog feels comfortable to use. One of the tools that I really like to use is called Furminator. Um, looks like this. Right. Uh, this is a great tool, uh, but I don't suggest using this too often because this gets really deep in the, in the po po core of your dog's fur and removes all the dead uh, fur from the bottom. Uh, but it's good to use it maybe once a week, but for a regular brush, you just find a brush that is ideal for your dog and just brush your dog. You can go as cheap as you want or as fancy fancy you want. Uh, just use any brush that you feel comfortable and brush your dog every day. There are many kinds of brushes. So this is also a brush as well. So it looks like this. Um, so you can still brush your dog. Um, there's a question. My Sammy doesn't shed much. Do I still need to brush him daily? Uh, yes, it's a good question. Even your dog is not a shed dog, shedding dog. Now, I was going to do a video about this, but uh, let me go through the answer here. So there are, there, are, there are all the dogs, all the breeds are shedding dogs. There is no such a thing as non-shedding dog. They always shed. There is a little bit of shedding going on anyways. Unless your dog is Chinese crescent that they don't have uh, much fur, they need to, you need to apply oils and things like that to them. To them. But in general, every dog uh, brushing, it's mandatory in a way, it's needed. It's not just for the fur, it's for the skin as well. It, it's good to stimulate the skin. Uh, and it, they feel good too when you brush them. So yeah, just a simple brush, you know, just you don't have to really work hard. If, if you have a type of dog who's, <clears throat> again, there is no such thing as non-shedding, but they shed less. So you still just brush them every day. That's a good question. So brushing is something that you want to do every day. It gives you an opportunity to, um, Hang out with your dog, gives you an opportunity to connect and bond with your dog. So go ahead and brush your dog. It, it's not only good for them, it's good for your relationship as well. Now, this is a clip, a nail clipper. I suggest this type of nail clipper. Myself, I don't do nail clipping, but whoever uses, whoever does nail clipping, they really like this type of, uh, I think they're called guillotine uh, nail clippers. This type of clippers. Apparently they do a better job than any other nail clipper. So if you're, a, if you're comfortable to clip your dog's nail, this is a good tool. Um, be careful, don't, if you're not comfortable clipping your dog's nails, don't worry, take your dog to uh, the groomer or the vet and they will do it for you. Um, yes, so uh, Furballs is saying that she has the same type of uh, nail clipper and they're great. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, as I said, there are many people who do use and also clip their dog's nails now they suggest this type of clipper. So they look like that. I think they're called guillotine type of uh, clippers. So clipping your dog's nail. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and clip your dog's nail and uh, nails. And also, if you can, file your dog's nails as well. So this is this is filer. Uh, it's good to file them. You know, so it doesn't scratch, they don't scratch themselves, man, because as soon as you clip their nails, it, it gets really sharp. So you want to clip their nails as well, uh, file their nails as well. <clears throat> Next thing that we're going to focus on is a uh, toothbrush. So toothbrushes usually come, for dogs, come in this uh, format. If you, if you 
could find a toothbrush that is this type. So it has the small one and the big one. The reason I suggest you to do, I'm going to do a video about how to uh, brush your dog te dog's teeth. But for now, I suggest you to use a, a toothbrush like this. You don't need to have a toothpaste. The purpose of cleaning your dog's teeth is just to remove all the debris that is stuck in between their teeth. And that's all you want to do. You just want to remove it. You don't want to put any additional food particles or anything in their mouth when you're cleaning their teeth. So uh, I like to use this type because it gives you an opportunity and an option to go really in tight places and also just uh, places that it's really easy to go and brush your dog's teeth. Uh, so I'll show you uh, and soon I'm going to do a video. Uh, I'm going to use Harvey, my own dog, to show you how to brush your dog's teeth. So stay tuned for that video. So brushing is a good idea. Scaling your dog's teeth is a good idea. This is a scaler, a uh, tool called scaler, so you can scale your dog's teeth as well. And I'll show you again in the coming up in upcoming video how to use this. So again, if you are, your dog is comfortable to be brushed, um, it's a good idea to use brush, toothbrush. I find using a baby toothbrush to be easier as well. Yes. To, you know, again, just find the one that works for you and your dog. Um, usually, um, whatever works, works. This is also, you know, this is designed for dogs. So you can use baby toothbrush as well. So if you, your dog feels comfortable to be brushed, do it and scale their uh, teeth as well. Um, so that's the grooming part. That's all basically you need to focus on. Now let's go to dog toys. I usually like to use hard dog toys, not soft dog toys. Uh, the reason for that is, first of all, I don't suggest to have toys like this, especially the ones that make noise like that, squeaky toys. That's what happens. They destroy it. What they do, they want to get to this squeaker and they want to get it out. In a way, they want to kill it. They want to shut it up, right? So what they do, they work on this toy, they, dis they cut it up, destroy it, they get everything out, they get to the squeaker and they kill it. In their mind, they have done the job, they have killed the dog, killed the animal, and then what happens is you throw it away and then you go buy a new one. And then they say, you know what, I just, killed it, I just destroyed it, and here we go again, I gotta start doing it again. So they go and kill the animal again. So it's a bad habit that you're teaching your dog. I really don't suggest to use squeaky toys and fluffy toys and stuffed toys until your dog has some form of um, self-control not to destroy this. Uh, until then, you can use these tough toys. This is a Kong toy, this is a tough ball, you know, you can't, they can't really chew on it and destroy it. Uh, and they come in a variety of forms of toys. Some people like to fill them up with peanut butters and uh, treats and things like that and let them play and figure it out how to get it out so it becomes an entertainment as well as a toy to play with your dog. So I highly suggest toys like this. Uh, tough toys rather than fluffy stuffed toys. All right. Uh, getting, yes, so I'm using a baby toothbrush to be easier. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. So that's the toy department. Now let's go to uh, cleaning, cleaning accidents or cleaning your home. Uh, I like to be a little bit more careful about when I'm, what I'm using to clean the house or clean my um, um, anything that my dog touches. So I like to go a little bit more natural and non-toxic product. In general, if you could use something that is non-toxic, uh, this is a method all purpose uh, and with non-toxic, uh, plant-based um, 
power green technology. So it's plant-based, it's safe. So something that is safe and clean, you want to stick to a, a product that is you feel comfortable and safe to use it around your dog. So if you're if you want to clean something, you know, especially the dog toys and things like that, use a product that is non-toxic and is natural, and you can apply it to anything, and you can just be uh, comfortable using them, so you're not harming your dog uh, as well. Uh, now, the other thing is. Um, if your dog feels comfortable and feels uh, uh, okay for with you to to be groomed and washed and baited, uh, I suggest to use uh, this is what I use again. Vets Vets Best. Uh, it's a shampoo that you can use for your dog. Again, this is natural. It doesn't have all kinds of ingredients, weird ingredients in it. You know, shampoo, you have to also be careful. It's something that it touches your dog's skin. Uh, so you be careful what kind of shampoo you're using. Try to use a shampoo that is more natural. Uh, it's non-toxic. and it's, it's, It doesn't have a whole bunch of ingredients on the, in the ingredients list. Uh, I have done uh, an, a, a blog post about shampoos, but I'm going to do a video about shampoos as well uh, in upcoming videos. So make sure to subscribe so you can get the information as well. Um, the other thing that I suggest about shampoos is that if, you, if your dog doesn't feel comfortable or you don't feel comfortable bathing your dog at home and you don't want to do it, and you take your dog to the groomer, find a groomer that will um, um, find a groomer that will help uh, let you either either they have uh, products uh, or shampoos that are natural and safe, or take your shampoo and give it to the vet to the groomer and say, you know, can you use this shampoo on my dog? So that's that also that way you can make sure that your dog is not getting any toxic uh, in their body. So they usually, groomers, they use, uh, use a commercial uh, type of um, industrial, commercial type of shampoos and things like that. But uh, again, tell them not to use those and give them the shampoo that you want them to use. So I have a question from Furball says, uh, what do you recommend for fleet tick as in, uh, natural remedies? I'm trying to avoid giving medication. Very good question. I'm getting to it. I'm going to get into it in a moment. I'll answer that in a moment. Now, the other thing that I really suggest is to have something that, again, if your dog gets scrapes or nicks and things, cuts and things like that, uh, I like to use uh, a product from Peter Dobias, Dr. Dobias Healing Solution, it's called. Uh, this is very natural, very non-toxic, uh, healthy uh, form of um, in, all kinds of ing good ingredients in there that you can use uh, to heal your dog's uh, cuts and bru bruises and hot spots and uh, all kinds of, even you can use it uh, on, on yourself, human friendly. Uh, so people can use and dogs can use. So that's another thing. Um, if you have a dog who has dirty ears and or you know always um, is itchy and scratching their ears, I find this product really good and works really good. Zenotics, Zenotics, uh, Z N O T I X. You can see it. Uh, this is a miracle product. Uh, I've used it only once in the past few years. <laughs> it, it, did, it did a really good job. Uh, this cleans it up, heals it, and uh, does everything. But the other part of it is that you have to also clean your dog's ear. I have a video about how to clean your dog's ear. I believe I have. Uh, but also, if you change your dog's diet, uh, your dog is going to have less uh, opportunity to have uh, dirty ears and inflammation in their ears uh, but if you have a dog who has some form of uh, problem with their ears definitely I recommend this product it works 
and it's natural and clean and you can also use, you just have to use it once and that's, that's it, it's done. Now let's go to uh, answer also to question about fur balls. Uh, you were asking for flea control and things like that. I haven't come across any uh, chemical, I don't want to put chemicals in my dog's body as well, uh, but I find the only product that I have used and it has worked, I'm not sure if it's working or not, uh, if it's because of this or not, uh, but um, I have been using this for years now and it's working and um, I'm guessing it's because of this. It's a product called Diatomaceous Earth. I'm going to hold it here so you can see and if you need to pause the video after the live session, you can pause it and uh, look at it and maybe research it. Um, San Sangeeta is here. Hello Sangeeta, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Yes, yeah, so this Diatomaceous Earth is a pro it's a basically uh, seashells. They have um, crushed it and made it to a powder like that. Uh, and you just uh, put it in your dog's uh, meal. So this is uh, Sangrida, this is for uh, flea control. It does flea control and lice as well. Uh, all kinds of things. It, what it is, it's a crushed uh, seashells uh, and uh, they have made it as a powder and you just add it to your dog's uh, food and then uh, the only thing is that you have to feed your dog every day. So it kind of goes and creates a protection in your dog's uh, body so the fleas and ticks and things like that, they can stick to your dog's uh, body. Uh, so there are two types of, that's a good question for balls. Uh, there are two types of uh, diatomaceous earth. And there's one, it's you put it in their food and one that you uh, just put it on their fur and just cover their body with, uh, with this powder. You could do that too with any of these. Um, I don't like that approach, it just makes everything <laughs> a little bit dusty and uh, messy. I like just to put it in my dog's food, it's easier. Uh, and as I said, I've been doing this for years, I've been giving this to my dog for years, and it's been working out that. And so far my dogs, uh, even Jonah who passed away, he never got fleas and things like that. Um, now let's go to, um, where am I? Okay, we did that. Okay, so next thing that I would suggest you to have uh, is a emergency kit. Not, not many dog, dog owners think about this. Emergency kit is a good idea to have. This, this I got it from this uh, uh, place. Um, basically what it is, uh, it's, got, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. One of the things that I really like to have is this sticky band. Right? I, I think they're called sticky band. What it is basically, if your dog has a cut or something, it's really hard to use a regular band and just wrap it. It just comes off easily, but these ones stick to their fur and stick to itself as well. Makes it so much easier. And so if your dog gets a cut or something, uh, you know, you could spray some of these healing solution on your dog, as I mentioned. Just spray some of this. And then clean it up and then wrap it up. So basically, uh, it's a good idea to have a, a, a first aid bag all the time. And in it, you can have all kinds of stuff. You can just Google and research what to have. I will make a video in future about, um, in upcoming videos about what kind of emergency kit, what stuff you should have in your dog's emergency kit bag. Uh, this is just for emergency of, let's say, um, when something major happens, like a cut or something like that, and uh, then you can take care of your dog before you get to the vet. So you're just taking care of it temporary. Uh, this is not for in case of, let's say, um, earthquake or something like that. This is just to 
temporarily to take care of the situation until you get to the vet. So first aid kit is a must as well. Uh, next thing, let's get to um, this part. So I'm going to show you. So because of this video, I'm showing you a smaller kennel crate. Uh, so if you have a big dog, obviously you're going to get a bigger kennel and crate. Uh, so crate is good to have. Uh, I like the crates that they have a little bit of opening like that, not fully opened, right? Because then you can adjust it. You can cover it with a blanket or a towel or something uh, if you want them to not to get too stressed. You can use a crate like this in your car, in the back seat, or um, in, the, in the back um, trunk. You can, if you have an SUV or such such car, you can put it in there and put keep your place your dog in there and just have your dog in there. So that's another thing that is good to have. Now, the other thing that I would suggest you to have, even it's a must, is this thing. It's an X pen. I don't know if you can see. It's an X pen, and what this does, it has eight parts and they're flexible and you can adjust them and you can make a little uh, temporary closed enclosed area for your pet for your dog to hang around in there you can close it up have it uh, you know set it up wherever you are so your puppy your dog can be in there so it's confined and under control so these are called expand or exercise pans. Um, they come in all kinds of sizes and shapes, not shapes, but sizes. Um, I gave several, ex uh, I get uh, excellent training tools. Yes, it's a very, it's a, definitely it's a training tool. You can use this as a training tool, especially if you have puppies, you want to use this. You want to put, uh, place this in somewhere that you are, let's say if you're working in the kitchen or in the office or you're in wherever you are in the garden, you can take this with you, set it up, put the pl place that your puppies in there and continue on doing on whatever you're doing. Your puppy, your dog hangs out with you. You have the ability to keep an eye on them they're safe and they're not detached from you. And these comes in uh, different sizes and heights. Uh, I believe these are the highest that they can go. And uh, then what you do is you just put it away if you have to. You can take it anywhere and just put it away. So you could set that up also and put the crate in there as well. And have your puppy in there. So far, so good, right? We're doing good on time as well. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, uh, let me know and I'll answer them. If you have any dog-related questions, go ahead and ask me. So now let's get to the other part, which is uh, what, whether you're feeding your dog uh, kibble or cooked home cooked food or a raw diet, I always suggest to add some sort of supplements to your dog. The reason for that is uh, because of um, the quality of products that we have nowadays, it's a little bit lower than before. Uh, so we want to add some sort of supplements to our dog's diet. So some of the supplements that I have started, I have been using with my dog. Uh, now again, I'm not promoting any products, I'm just giving you some ideas. This is, um, uh, it's called solid uh, ground, only solid ground. Uh, this is antioxidant. So I'm gonna bring it really close so you can see what it says. So it's an antioxidant uh, and uh, this is um, prebiotics. Okay, so there's prebiotics, there's uh, probiotics as well. Uh, so the other product that I have, it's from Max Complete. Uh, this is 
this is also probiotic. So this is the product. I'm just testing. I'm, I have actually started just testing this uh, on Harvey, my dog. And, and if I feel good about it, I'm going to promote it later. Um, but this is something I use as well. Uh, the other thing that I use is Grimin. Grimin is all natural green sup superfood for dogs, uh, rich in minerals and amino acid. If you can see that. This is also from Dr. Peter Tobias. It's a Grimin from Healing Solutions, uh, minerals and supplements. Um, the other product that I use from Dr. Peter Tobias is um, multivitamins. It's called Soul Food. Uh, again, this is for, I don't know if you can see it, but it's multivitamins for dogs. So this is another thing that I add to my dog's food. One more thing that I add from uh, Dr. Peter Tobias is, it's called uh, Feel Good. Uh, this is Omega-3. Uh, and uh, I add a little bit of this to my dog's diet as well. So these are basically what I add to my dog's food, okay? Uh, one more thing that I add is turmeric. Turmeric is a great natural um, detoxifier, a lot of goodies in there, good stuff in there, natural, uh, cheap, and very healthy. No chemicals in that. So turmeric is good. The other thing is ginger. So those are the basic things that you need to add to your dog's diet. Whether, whatever diet your dog is in, it's good to add these supplements anyways. Now, I think I got the, to everything. The last thing I think that you need is my book, uh, A Dog's Five Essential Needs. So this is for you. Yes, turmeric is a human grade. Uh, turmeric, uh, human grade, Turmeric is okay to use on dogs as well, uh, as well as ginger. You pow ginger powder is a good to thing to use as well. So the other thing that you need to have is my dog, my book that I've published, a Dog's Five Essential Needs. Five, the, th the, the five things your dog requires to have a healthy and happy life. So, I, I published this a few years ago. This will give you some ideas of how, this is a kind of a manual. Uh, I published this book after a few years that I was, after about 10 years that I was doing training dog owners, dogs and dog owners. What happened, I noticed that after 10 years, I finally realized that I'm repeating everything that I'm saying in this book to every single client. So I decided to write a book and share this with my clients and you. So if you want to get the information about this book and where to get it, it's available on Amazon. Uh, it's, it, the, the information is in the description uh, of this video. You can go ahead and find out about it. And one more thing, uh, this is a roller, ring roller, link uh, roller. You can get, you know, the, I got this for $2. Uh, this is a must for dog owners. You, you need to clean yourself. You know, you get hairy or fur all over your body, right? Uh, it's something that is necessary. Every dog owner should have. So lint cleaner is a good product as well to have. Uh, I think I went through everything that product-wise. Now let me go through a few other things that I think is good for dog owners to know these things. Now. If, if you're gonna have a dog, you're gonna have to have some, some connections to some services that you're gonna be needing to use. One of them is a vet. I highly suggest to select a vet who's holistic vet. Try to find a holistic vet in the neighborhood and nearby that you can go. Not the traditional way, but holistic vet. The traditional vets, Furball says, okay, great, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll check it out. Thank you, Furball, yes. Yeah, the information of, uh, I think you're talking about the, the book. Yes, the information is in the description. Uh, so one of the things that I suggest is holistic vet. 
the reason I suggest holistic wealth because in this day and age, things have changed. We have learned so much about dogs. That includes their behavior, their health, their diet, everything has changed. And also we've learned so much about dogs. So holistic vets, they always are trying to figure out a way to not, uh, not only cure your dog, they are there to clean that problem. They don't want your dog to get that illness again because holistic vets usually they are more connected to nature so they want to clean up the nature so one of if they see that a natural animal is not clean they want to clean it up so they will do things to um, get rid of the the problem rather than just patch the problem so i highly suggest you to find a holistic vet if you could find a groomer who's natural, who uses natural products and is holistic as well, that's that's great to uh, figure out and find one in your neighborhood and use them, rather than a groomer who uses chemicals and uh, industrial uh, grade products. Uh, if you're gonna select a dog trainer. This is something very connected to my heart, obviously. If you're going to select a dog trainer, select a dog trainer who doesn't use force, domination, and alpha role. They pick a dog trainer who doesn't use this type of, these methods of training, you know, to be alpha. A dog trainer who says to you, you have to be alpha. A dog trainer who tells you that you need to be dominating your dog and you need to use force right away just take off go away just don't even talk to them uh, just like i said you know we so uh, at this stage we've learned so much about dogs we are finding out new things about dogs they're they're we're just updating and not even upgrading but updating still information about dog behavior and health and diet and all everything so all these methods of force and domination and using being, being alpha or using tools like shock collars. Any dog trainer says your dog needs to, we need to use shock collar or prong collar or choke chain collars or any form of collar that hurts and causes pain in your dog. Again, avoid them. Don't use them don't go and take them if they say no it's too late your dog is damaged and red zone as soon as they use the word red zone as well take off don't use them there is a better way there is much more holistic healthier way to train and change dogs behavior you don't have to use dog trainers you use uh, force domination being alpha tools like shock collars, things like that. And also, if you could find a trainer who doesn't use food or treats as well, like me, also I suggest you to do that. The reason again, you don't want to use treats or food to train dogs because it's not only confusing for dogs when you use treats, it causes health issues to develop in dogs as well. I have done videos about this topic and this subject, so I highly suggest you to find a trainer who would use, I would say, more of educating you rather than training your dog. I train dogs, but I mainly educate dog owners because the core of a dog problem is the human. We have to fix and teach and educate the dog owner in order to fix the dog. If a dog is that to that level, that is the dog trainer or whoever call, tells you that it's a red zone and it's done, it's too aggressive, it has to be put down, things like that, if they say, no, there is always a way. You can, the shock, shock collar, the using shock collars and force and domination and being alpha or tools is the shortcut is the answer that you want to get within five minutes or five days. That's not real, realistic to look at it. You have to use time to heal a dog. 
a dog who's broken that way and is aggressive that way, all we have to do is avoid situation that causes that dog to behave that way, work on improving the connection and the relationship between the dog and the dog owner. A trainer has to help you to become an educated dog lover so you can become empowered with knowledge to help your dog. Nobody can help your dog other than you. You are the source of information for your dog. Your dog has been, has bonded with you, not with the dog trainer, has bonded with you, needs to get information from you, so you need to give that information to your dog. And unfortunately, most of these dogs who have these major behavioral issues that we call them even a red zone, the reason that happens is because the owner and the dog are disconnected. Mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, everything is disconnected. And the dog is not receiving any information from dog owner so therefore the dog gets more and more stressed to the point that has to behave that way. It's screaming and it's telling you, I need help. I need you to help me. Mom, dad, help me. And all you have to do is just reconnect to your dog. So find a dog trainer who's more of holistic also, is more of trying to build and rebuild or refix or reattach the connection between you and your dog. By the way, I forgot, I just realized that I forgot something, but I'm gonna mention that. Uh, so the dog, the vet that you're gonna select, make sure is holistic. The groomer that you're gonna select, make sure is holistic. The trainer that you're gonna select, is a, make sure that is holistic as well. One more thing that I forgot to mention is the dog bed, sorry. <laughs> so I'm, I, again, for this, in live session I chose this small bed but your dog needs a bed as well so any bed will do you can you know put this bed inside this crate and make it a cozy place for your dog and your dog is gonna love it so put a couple of these beds in your home as well and let your dog enjoy the bed uh, some of you have asked me is it okay if my dog sleeps with me in the bed? My answer is, can you guess what it is? What is my answer? Is it okay if my dog sleeps in my bed? Do you know the answer? Tell me what is the answer? In your opinion, is it okay for your dog to sleep in your bed or in their bed? What is the answer? Can you tell me? If you're watching, let me know. So Furballs says no, you shouldn't let the dog sleep in your bed. Anybody else? All right, let me tell you my answer. I would say yes, as long as your dog is allowed to sleep in your bed all the time. And Julie says yes, laughing out loud, I have a beagle, of course. Especially if you have a beagle. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, it's okay to let your dog to sleep with you in your bed, as long as you are always allowing your dog to sleep in your bed. There, there isn't any rules, no you can't today or tomorrow it's okay, but not today. Not your dog, once you allow your dog to sleep in your bed, that's it. You have to allow your dog to sleep in your bed. My Sammy always, always sleeps in, in his own doggy bed. Yes, my, my dogs, Jonah and also Harvey, they sleep in their own bed. I have, I think Harvey now at home because we lost Jonah last year. We have four or five beds in our bed, in our bed, in our home. So he sleeps in those beds. He doesn't even try to get on our bed or couches and things like that. That's because I never encouraged him or encouraged them to get on the, the bed. I just wanted them to um, have a good sleep. Uh, and I just remember, I just didn't encourage them to get on the bed and, um, you know, to get on my couches and things like that. So all I did is I just 
told them to sleep in their own bed and they were happy with that and they slept all the t always in their bed. So I don't also let my dogs, it's not that I don't let, it's just they don't want to sleep in my bed. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing that I always get asked. Uh, that includes, you know, furniture, includes, uh, you know, the couches and everything. If you allow your dog to get on the couch, you have to allow them all the time. It doesn't make them dominant. It doesn't affect their behavior. It will affect their behavior if you one day you say yes, and the next day you say no. That will affect their behavior. That will make them to get confused because one day you're saying yes, the next day you're saying no to the bed and to the couch or whatever. That confuses the dog, so the dog says, hmm, I'm confused, I'm stressed, so that causes them to misbehave and have behavioral issues. But if you say whatever, you are allowed on the couch and or not allowed on the couch. So you can choose. You can say to your dog, yes on the couch or no on the couch. But you gotta stick to it, black and white. You can't be all over the place. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, yes. Thursdays, Fridays, no. Saturdays, Sundays, because we have guests, maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it goes all over the place when you do it that way, deal with your dog. So your dog gets confused because of these ups and, ups and downs. But once you tell your dog that, no, you're not allowed on the couch, or yes, or you're allowed on the couch, they say, okay, I'm allowed on the couch, or okay, I'm not allowed on the couch. So they don't mind it. As long as you are clear about it, and you make sure that you don't understand that whether they are allowed on the couch or not. Make sense? All right. So I'm just going to stay for a few more minutes uh, to answer some questions, if you have any. Uh, that will uh, also let me uh, to give you some uh, updates about my channel. Uh, I have been growing really fast. My channel has been growing up really fast. I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy. I love what I'm doing and I love seeing the reaction that I'm getting in, in my channel. And I would highly suggest you to, if you have dog friends and friends who have dogs, I would highly suggest you to share this channel with them and let them know that come and uh, join the community and also um, watch all my videos. And my channel is, is giving you a fresh uh, idea, some fresh idea, some fresh way of looking at dogs and dog training. The old methods of dog training and living with dogs are all just very outdated. We need to update them. So I'm updating the, the information and how to raise a puppy, how to live with a dog, uh, and I'm uh, giving you some fresh ideas, and we're, you're learning some um, new ideas and techniques about your dog and how to live and um, treat your dog and how to uh, teach them training them and how to live with your dog. So hopefully you're enjoying all this information and I hope you had some good uh, information tonight I shared with you. This is something that I wanted to do, but I found if I had done it uh, in a regular video, it would have been a little bit difficult to manage it. So I decided to do this way. I brought all the uh, products that a, a basic new dog owner or even you know experienced dog owner should have and know these are the things that you want to uh, focus on these are just basic products you don't have to go really fancy or expensive if you just stick with the basic it will be cost effective as well and also your dog you know they don't really care if they have um, you know your dog doesn't really care if you, they have a fancy nancy color or just a simple color. They don't really care. 
we care what it is. We care how much we paid for this color or how much we paid for that. But they don't care. All they care is having you. You being around and focusing on them and paying attention to them and giving them your attention. That's all they really need. So I hope you like this video. Again, if you are watching rerun of this video and watching after the live session is over, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave those questions in the comments area. I'll address them as soon as possible, or I will make a video about them. And remember, if you want to become an educated dog lover and have a great, well-behaved, healthy and happy dog, consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video. Until next time, have fun with your dog.